I teach introductory biology and we were using a technique of DNA barcoding already in our laboratory and I thought we spend the money to do this analysis wouldn't it be beneficial if somebody could actually use our results so I thought who has samples that they might need identified and I thought of my two entomologist friends and called Wendy and Kim and uh, they said oh yes we have some samples that you could identify your students could identify and that's how we started the Tucson Bee Collaborative. My name is Jennifer Catcher, and I'm a biology instructor here at Pima Community College. And I am one of the uh, members of the Tucson Bee Collaborative, one of the founders. I'm Kim Franklin. I am the conservation science manager at the Desert Museum. In the Tucson Bee Collaborative, my role is the researcher, the scientist who has a lot of questions about bees. So the most fundamental question is just, what is the bee diversity of the Sonoran Desert? I'm Wendy Moore. I am an associate professor in the Department of Entomology and the curator of the University of Arizona's insect collection. And I'm one of the founders of the Tucson Bee Collaborative. I'm Tanner Bland graduated last semester with a BS in Ecology and Evolutionary Biology from U of A, and now I'm working for Wendy Moore at the University of Arizona Insect Collection as her laboratory coordinator. The Tucson Bee Collaborative is a group of folks that are interested in identifying bees for conservation efforts. You can't conserve something that you don't even know is there. We are designing um, research sampling bees in different locations throughout our community. This is our first site, Las Milpitas and we sampled here consistently for two years. And then there's three other sites. Most bees, 97% of all bees, are solitary ground nesting bees. And they're single moms who provision their own eggs. They don't live in hives. There's not thousands of sisters living together. Um, and the Sonoran Desert hosts roughly 2,000 species of these solitary ground nesting bees. I have about a dozen volunteers. Almost all of them are also docents at the Desert Museum. A lot of them are retired scientists, um, and they want to give back. They want to be involved in, in scientific research that contributes to conservation of, of biodiversity. And so each volunteer sort of finds their own niche in the work that we're doing. So some people prefer to be out in the field doing the sampling and some people prefer to be in the lab doing the pinning and the labeling and the identification pieces. And some of the volunteers focus on the educational piece. Over the past six years, seven years, we've collected about 30,000 bees. All of those bees have been pinned and labeled, carefully curated, and the bottleneck is being able to identify all those bees. And so the students, that's where they come in. When we think of bees, we always tend to think about honeybees, but we're talking about native wild bees. Many of them are much, much smaller than a honeybee and they can all look alike. So it can be difficult to identify them by their morphology, by their shape. So looking at their DNA sequence can help us to identify them more conclusively. The first step is that the Desert Museum will provide us with a bee leg, which is where we extract the DNA from, and the students will grind it up with a very tiny mortar and pestle, go through some chemical steps to extract the DNA. We send off the samples to be sequenced at a facility, and then they return us the list for each bee of how many A's, T's, G's, and C's, and in what order they are. And then from that, we can use a series of computer-based tools, including the Barcode of Life database, to analyze the DNA and determine the species. So the Barcode of Life database is an international effort to represent every species on Earth with its DNA in this database. You can really understand more about the diversity of life if you can look at the similarities and differences between the DNA sequences. Here we are at the University of Arizona's insect collection. 
As the curator of the insect collection, my primary goal is to acquire DNA barcodes for native bees in the Sonoran Desert region to build molecular identification resources and tools for researchers to use around the world. We've built the capacity to take pictures in high definition of specimens so that you can also see them, see their structure. Connecting those high resolution images to the DNA barcode is really where some great diagnostic tools can be built. Because many of our bees are not well studied here in the Sonoran Desert, um, many of them have never had their DNA sequenced before. And especially when we first started this project, uh, in many cases, uh, my students were the first to ever publish the DNA for that particular species of bee. I was a part of this sort of foundational class, a course-based undergraduate research experience, a cure that Wendy Moore was offering. I was a <laughs> planning to be a botanist before that, and then once I took that class with Wendy, it kind of hooked me into these really tiny bees that live here that I'm super fascinated by. One of the benefits of participating in research early in one's uh, academic career is that you feel like a scientist. You become connected to the scientific community. They recognize in this project an opportunity to use their science for good. That information directly feeds into conservation efforts. One of the things that I like best about the Tucson Bee Collaborative is sort of the flattening of hierarchy uh, in the project. So when we go out into the field, what we see is students that are in um, community college. We see U of A students that are undergraduates, graduate students, research professors, research scientists, all working together to collect and identify bees. We're in the center of bee diversity in the world, and so why not study bees? We don't know even the species that occur here. 